All right, everybody. I want you to take a good look. Take a really good look. This is the last time that this car is gonna be this height. It's most noticeable in that rear. Hold on, ready? Yeah, failed the shoe test. I'm dead. <laughs> and back. Yeah, also failed the shoe test. So it's quite a large gap. We had a three finger gap in the back. And about a three finger gap also in the front. Yep, so as you can see, it's pretty high up off the ground right now. Next time you see this car, it's gonna be lowered with all new suspension. From monster truck to not monster truck. Exactly. <laughs> Something like this maybe, maybe. 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 Maybe going to Empire Performance, who has helped us install other things in the past. So, in order to have some ease of install, he's allowing us to use his lift. He's going to assist us. Obviously, you know, we hold the shop down. We make sure he gets his cut, but he helps us out with a lot of the work sometimes when it's heavy work, like this type of stuff on the ground. Even though we've done similar things in the past, we haven't done a complete suspension change in one day. We're hoping that we can get it done today. So stay tuned and we'll have more content on the way for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we decided to go with the BC Racing coilovers. And before you give me shit like other people in this room, just understand that the BC Racing coilovers are a budget friendly option and per my research Olin's or PSS 9's or 10's don't really need to be on this car because it won't be on the track so what I decided for was the BC racing coilovers with Swift Springs and I did a decent spring rate of like 5k in the front and 8k in the rear to kind of try and retain that, you know, comfort that I want to have while driving this car. But I also want the appearance of a low car, so this is kind of the best of both worlds. Now, I know these probably aren't the highest end option for a Porsche, but at the end of the day, I'll be reviewing them, and hopefully I'll get what I paid for, and I know what I paid for. Um, so, not, that being said, it doesn't mean that these are always going to be on the car forever. Potentially down the road, maybe we will upgrade to Olin's or Bilstein's or something like that. But for now, we're just going to go with what we got. So as you can see, they look really well crafted. Um, the Swift Springs are a really nice color. Um, I think that... I like how they paint match them. Yeah, I think that it looks really good. The ring is aluminum. The body is aluminum. Should have an anti... Yep, adjustable dampening. Soft or hard. Um, all the way around. So, has adjustable camber in the front. Fronts. Yep, on the right hand side. And in the back, it's just a straight shock. So, what I think we're going to try to do first is the front side. Um, we're also going to be installing a bunch of control arms and stuff today. Uh, so, stay tuned. All right, so basically what we're gonna be doing is removing the front strut. To do this, we're gonna have to loosen a bolt down here on the knuckle. And then we're gonna have to drop the car just a little bit on the lift and loosen up the top bolts. Once we have the control arm and everything loosened, we'll be able to drop the strut straight out and put in the new strut. So we'll do this step by step. Um, we're not gonna get too in detail. We'll just show you us kind of doing it again. And um, that would be the gist of it, yeah. All right. So basically what we've done is we removed the caliper, we've um, dropped the uh, control arm to allow the strut to have some play, and now we've lowered the car on the lift to be able to access the top three, to be able to access the top three bolts to loosen them. And we're covering the car to protect it while we work on the, on the side. If your mechanic doesn't do this for you, he doesn't like you. <laughs> he doesn't like you. Or he thinks your car is a piece of shit, one or the other. 
Anyway, just kidding. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove these top three bolts. Then we're going to raise the car back up. And then we're going to pull the assembly down for the uh, knuckle and take out the old shock. Then we can replace it with a new one and we'll be all done. So guys, basically we're trying to measure the distance from where the spindle sits or where the coilover sits in the spindle to the top of the actual coilover housing itself so that this way we can figure out the distance and then compare that to what we have OEM and we're going for an inch and a half at first. So if we measure from the bottom, it's the top, the top, the top of it. We're at 12 and almost three quarters. Look at here. And pull them. Right. So, that was 14. 14. Yeah. So it's probably be a quarter inch drop to start. All right, so let's just put it in the way it is then. A quarter inch, it, the spring's got to settle. Mm -hmm. And once they settle, then we will probably just have to pull it in to re Do the final adjustment? Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to do too much height adjustment with it off the car. Two ways is four and a half. So we finished up the coil over on the front. We also did the lower control arm as well as the other control arm in the front. And now we're moving on to the rear. So what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to remove the bolt on the knuckle, get inside the car, and also remove the bolts on the top of the strut. And then we're going to finagle or probably end up moving the sway bar out of the way in order to fit the new strut. We do have a full setup for the rear in terms of uh, control arms, but we're not gonna be doing it today just to save a little bit of time. But stay tuned for the ride height um, change. All right, so we actually ended up changing a bunch of the control arms in the rear since those were a lot easier. Um, and we also got the lower control arms in the front. We're gonna be doing the lower control arms and um, some of the other link arms in the rear the next time we get a chance. So as you can see, the BCs are in. We also did the uh, sway bar bushings. Um, we did and the- links. And end links as well, that's right. And we also did the top two control arms or traction arms, yep. Um, we're paint marking everything because we had to touch a lot of bolts today and we just want to make sure that if anything backs out, we'll catch it the next time that we come by. Do you suggest you do the same for any suspension or that you do? Yep, we do suggest you do the same. Here's a couple of those old arms. So, these are the old shocks from the rear. All right, so we're just about finished with this install for today. We installed the BC Racing coilovers. Um, we installed the front lower control arms. We installed a couple of the control arms in the rear, but not all. Some sway bar uh, bushings for the rear. We'll have to do the fronts. We'll have to do the end links for the fronts. We did the end links for the rear. Here are a few of the older arms, as you can see. And the wheel is back on. You can see the slight sliver of silver from the Swift Springs. Christian was paint matching every, or not paint matching, paint marking everything up. As you can see, that's the BC coilover installed in the rear. You got the paint mark there. Sway bar end links. Sway bar end links. New traction rods. New traction and rods. And the end, uh, sway bar bushings. Um, so, we're gonna lower it, we're gonna put the wheels on, we're gonna torque them, and we'll show you what the car looks like lowered because the springs obviously have to settle before 
we can, you know, really assess like what the actual height is. But I think that it'll look pretty good, maybe a little bit better than what it is, what it was from, you know, what you saw in the beginning of this it's video. It's definitely gonna be lower. We're just trying to figure out like how much. Lower. Yeah, exactly. So we'll show you what the car looks like lowered in just a second. So it doesn't look like it really got that much lower. Obviously the springs have to settle, but it doesn't look like he can fit his shoe in anymore, which is a positive, so. Eh. Maybe. Eh, not straight in, you know? It's like, like a, suspension. It's like a three and a, two and a half finger gap. And we're at two fingers. Oof. So. Listen guys, this took both of us a decent amount of time. Yeah. But honestly, the, we did a lot. And we didn't adjust the height at all. Yeah. So it's fine. But I think the rear looks a little bit lower only because the engine's in the back. This doesn't really have that much you know, compression, like if I sat on it a little bit. That's stiff. Yeah. Nice. Today, we're on our way for part two of the install of the suspension on this car. And I'm really excited. So far, the car actually feels great. I think that the suspension on the, uh, I think that the suspension that was on the car previously, which was the factory suspension, which might have been around eighty thousand miles old, the actual age of, the actual age of the car, was bad. It was crappy. It was cracked out. It was toast. So, putting on the coilovers, which usually produces kind of like a harsher ride you know, um, to some degree from over factory, you know, this feels amazing. So I can't imagine what, you know, fresh stock suspension would feel like on a Porsche 911 now. Um, but all in all, the coilovers are riding great. Um, they take up bumps very well. I'm actually very impressed because, um, for a $1,700 coilover on a Porsche 911, I did not expect to see, you know, this kind of result. Um, Ultimately, uh, the car still needs to get the rest of the control arms put on, which is what we're going to do today. Um, and uh, I'm excited. Then we can get an alignment and get this thing dialed in and move on to other parts of the vehicle that we want to upgrade and modify. Um, so far, so good. I'll give a more in-depth uh, review of the coilovers. Like, uh, I think once everything is aligned, straightened, and, you know, the coils have really settled in um, it has only been a few days since we've installed them and I've only driven it twice since then but still I think it feels great for what it is and I can't wait to get this car completely done um, from the suspension aspect so stay tuned and uh, we'll get that uh, stuff installed today so currently we've already installed in the back rear hand side the uh, lower control arm the tow arm and one of the other control arms for the rear and with that side done, that means that side of the, suspen the suspension is completely done. We have the coilover in, the upper control arms, the lower control arms, the tow arms, the uh, sway bar bushings, the uh, sway bar end links. Um, everything is tightened down and ready to go. So now we're on the other hand, other side, tightening the lower ball joint for the lower control arm, which is now getting tight. So we're almost there. And we gotta snug it up just a little. Now there's a torque spec online, but we're um, loosely following those torque spe specifications. We did use it for most things. I don't know why we didn't do it for everything, but um, I don't know. But anyway, we're almost done with this side. There's only one control arm to put in here. We're gonna change the toe arm, bolt back up the sway bar, and then we'll move to the front to just do the uh, sway bar end links. We're gonna change the sway bar end links, and then we're gonna change the uh, sway bar bushings. Um, and that should be all that we have to do up front. Maybe we'll get to the tie rod ends today, tie rod inner and outer rods. Um, but yeah, stay tuned. All right, so we're just about done here today. Um, basically, we went ahead and finished up everything on the rear of the car. As you can see, everything's paint marked. The suspension is all in, the coilovers are in, upper control arms, lower control arms, 
the sway bar bushings, everything's done. Basically, we just need an alignment. And in the front of the car, all we had decided to do was change the end links. The uh, suspension in the front, all we did was do the end links. We decided not to do the, um, we decided not to do the tie rods, inner and outer. The alignment is pretty straight, and they also look like they were aftermarket, so we didn't know how long ago they were changed. So we figured if they're not broken, don't fix it. So that's pretty much it. This suspension is now done. Now all we need to do is get an alignment and voila.